Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss numeric and date validation tests in Oracle. Numeric value data validation tests use simple field level logic. There are six examples in this rule set number four, and we're going to start with not null right now. So test number 10, the not null check, we're not even gonna execute it so straightforward. Basically, we're going into the demo HR countries table, returning all rows where region ID, a numeric field, is null, and we're counting those. If it counts greater than zero, then we get a fail, otherwise a pass. Pretty straightforward. Test case number 11, basically the same thing. We're looking for, we wanna ensure that the numeric value is not negative. So we're gonna go into demo HR countries, and we're gonna return any rows where the region ID is less than zero, bad. And if our count of bad is greater than zero, we fail. If we get nothing, zero, there's no bads, then we get a pass. And moving along to the numeric range. This one, we're actually gonna go into SQL Developer and run it and, and break the pieces apart. But basically what we wanna do here is count anytime the employee ID count as a fail, anytime the employee ID is less than 100 or greater than 999. If it's in between these values, it's a pass. If it's outside, it's a fail. So let's go look at that in SQL Developer. In SQL Developer, test number 12, looking at numeric range, let's look at the inner query here and run it just so you can get a visual of what's going on. And there we go. So there's 30, 40 rows and they're all a pass. And they're all coming in between 199. If we run the outer wrapper, it's gonna roll that all up and it's gonna say, hey, return all the rows that aren't P. Well, none of them are. It's gonna return nothing. If it returns nothing, the count is zero and it's gonna get a pass. So we run it and voila. Run the whole thing, get a pass. Let's go make this, uh, <sighs> let's just make it a bogus value there. Now everything's gonna fail. So let's run it so that everything fails and you get a nice rejection code telling you what's going on. This row, verify employee ID is greater than that. Da, da, da. Nope, the actual ID was 108. It's expected that it's blah, blah, blah. So then if we run the outer SQL, we're gonna get a fail. So you run the whole SQL in your automation script, get a nice compact fail. If you're troubleshooting, you come in and run this part to see what's going on and break it down. And in the advanced script, I'm not gonna do it now, you can watch a later video, there's actually better ways to organize this SQL so that it outputs the fails for you automatically. The next two numeric tests, data validation tests, T13, T14, they're just opposites. The first test here, T13, make sure the numeric value is within a list that you prescribe, make sure it's in 1234, return an error if it's not. And then the opposite, test 14, make sure that the value is not in the value list. So in this case, return an error if it is in 97, 98, 99. So I know it's a bit of a double negative, but this is what we want. Verify it's not in a value list. And to do that, we do the opposite. Return an error if it is. So let's go run both of these in SQL Developer. In SQL Developer, test case 13, verify the values in the list. Let's start out with the inner query. We wanna make sure that the region ID is in 1234. So what happens if we run this? It's basically gonna be pass, pass, pass because all the values are 1234. If they were not 1234, we'd get a fail. So we get all these passes, run the outer. It's gonna roll it up to single pass for us. Now down here, test 14 is the opposite. We want to make sure in the countries table that the region ID is never 97, 98, 99. If it is in there, but that set of values, then we want to return a fail. So let's run it. We're going to get a whole bunch of passes. And if we do the outer wrapper, we're going to get a single pass. And to watch it fail, let's put in one, because one is a value. It's used a lot. And we'll run the inner SQL to see what happens there. Fail, fail, fail. And I could add details besides fail. I could put an actual rejection code and say what the expected natural values were. But anyway, that is how with the numeric you do in a list or not in a list. And the last numeric data validation check that we're gonna demo is test 15. And it's a multi-field compare. Now in this example, we're gonna go to the demo HR employees table, one table, and we're gonna use m multiple fields, the salary, commission percent, those two fields, we're gonna multiply them together and make sure that the 
product is never greater than 10,000. It's just fictitious numbers. But the point is that you can get some power out of numeric data validation tests by comparing one field with another or sometimes multiple fields with each other. And you can even join multiple tables and get fields from many different tables and, and do calculations with them. So you can do some pretty powerful things with them. But this is probably the most useful numeric data validation test that you'll use as a multi-field compare. Date value data validation tests also use simple field level logic, similar to the numeric test we just looked at. There are five examples in this rule set, and we're going to get started with not null right now. So our first test case for date values is the not null check. It's very similar to the numeric that we just looked at above. You go in and select case when the date last updated, the date field is null, return a fail, otherwise a pass. Do it for every row in the demo, HR countries table. So the inner SQL is going to return 1,000 results if there's 1,000 rows. The outer wrapper is going to count only, the, it's going to return only those of the status that's not P, that's fail, and it's going to count those. And if there's zero rows returned, because they're all passes, then it's going to get a pass. If there's one or more fails returned, then it's going to get a fail. Test 17 verifies that a date field is within a specified date range. Uh, we're going to go look at this one in SQL Developer so that you can see what's going on. But basically, it's going to return a single pass or fail, but it's going to go look at all the data in the Demo HR Countries table. And it's going to look at the date last updated. And if it's greater than right now, it's going to return one error. And if it's less than 1-1-2021, it's going to return another error. So let's go look at that. We're going to start with the inner SQL run that so you can see what's going on. But basically, it's got a case when, case when, two different rejection codes that it's going to test for here. And it's going to return a lot of details. What's the expected result? What's the actual result, etc. So let's go run this. This inner query is going to return one row for every row in the database. Let's run that. And it's all pass, 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 pass. But let's kick this one back to sysdate minus 50 days. And let's run the internal. And we get a whole bunch of failures. If we look at the details, field date last updated cannot be in the future. We expect it less to, to be less than June 30th, but the actual is June 13th. Well, actually, I should have put uh, sysdate minus 50 in here as well, and then I'd get the right results down here. What the heck, we'll, we'll do that really quick. There we go. So rejection one, we expect it to be less than 11th of May, but it's actually the 13th of June, the value that's in there. So it's nice. It's nice to get the failure in the rejection code. Now, of course, if we run with the wrapper, it all rolls up to single cell fail. And if we undo, 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 there we go. Everything's back to normal. And then we run it. It should all go to a pass. And it does. So really handy. And you could do as many, you know, copy paste this row over and over and over and add additional date logic from additional fields or the same field with additional constraints that you want to put on it. But handy way to check out date ranges. Date validation tests T018 and T019 are complementary. Uh, one verifies that there's no time part, date only, and the other verifies there is a time part. It's not date only. Now, usually if you set up your data types properly as a date only or as a timestamp, you won't run into a problem. But invariably, I've seen this where it causes really nasty bugs that take a while to find because you're not expecting the problem to be here. But basically what happens is a, a field is a timestamp type of a flavor, a data type, and people have been sticking a date only in there with 12 colon zero zero colon zero zero as the time, and it's been running fine for years. And then someone new comes and changes the code and changes the data type in the code, not realizing that it's going to write out as a timestamp with a time now. And anyway, it, it's, it's a nice little check to have to just verify that, hey, we expect it to not have a time part or to have a time part. So let's go look at what that looks like in SQL Developer. So test 18, test 19, we're going to look at the demo HR employees table. Double click that real quick, employees, and we're going to look at the hire date. It's a date. It's not a timestamp. It's not a date time. So it doesn't have a time component. Look at the data. So it's not really a good test. I should have a time component out there, but whatever. You'll get the concept. So let's run this and say, hey, go select all the rows in employees table and take the hire date 
and convert it to care and go strip off the hours, minutes, and seconds. And if it's not equal to 12 o'clock midnight, then do a fail. So run it. But they're all, of course, going to be 12 o'clock midnight because they don't exist. So it's going to be a pass. And if we run it with a wrapper, it'll all roll up to a single P. Test 19 is the opposite. We're going to check. And instead of it's the same exact SQL, except instead of saying, show me a fail where it's not midnight, now you're going to say, show me a fail where it is exactly midnight, right down to the second, because it shouldn't be. There should be some, you know, a minute off, an hour off, three hours off. And it's just the opposite. If I would go to run it, they're all going to pass. And the outer wrapper is going to roll up to a single P. And date validation test number 20, the multi-field compare, just like the numeric multi-field compare we looked at earlier. In this case, in the demo HR schema job history table, we're going to go through every single row and compare and say, hey, if the start date is ever greater than or equal to the end date, that's a fail. So I'm not going to go into SQL Developer, but if we were to run that, we would get the whole long list of passes and fails, and then the outer wrapper would roll it all up to single pass or fail. So very handy. You'll use that a lot. And it's it's nice if, if you don't have a specific literal date that you want to compare against, you can always compare one field against another, an update field versus a create date field, or three or four different date fields across different tables. Anyway, you'll find that handy. Now I'm going to switch to a bonus tip. And this is doing date overlaps, where table one, start and end, two different fields, and you want to join where the rows of table two that also has a start and an end date. So there's four fields going on here. Table one has a start date and an end date. Table two has a start date and an end date. And you want to join on some keys where there's an overlap between those dates. It's something we do in the insurance industry. And it's a neat trick that I learned. I don't remember Jennifer or Matt or Jonathan, coworkers that I, one of them showed that to me back in 2011. Very neat trick. And in general, the problem that I just outlined, you're trying to join two tables with logic where the table one start date and end date overlaps with the table two start date and end date. And there's a simple solution. You join where table one start date is less than table two end date. It's all about the opposites. Table one, table two, start date, end date. We're gonna see down here why that is. And the table one end date is greater than or equal to the table two start date. So let's go see why. You have table one start to end, table two start to end. They have no overlap at all. You're going to discard it. You're not going to join. Why? Because the table one comes completely before table two. The table one end does not touch the table two start. So our rule is valid. And you're going to see through all six of these scenarios that this simple rule here applies to all of them. Scenario one gets discarded. Scenario two, where the table one end just touches the table two start, we're going to pull it. It's going to get included because of exactly that. The table one end date right there is equal to the table two start date. And the table one start date is less than the table two end date. And as you work your way down and you see this block shift, now the table one is in the middle, it's still gonna get included because that date logic up above works. And here where the start date of table one is now in the middle, before it was completely outside, the date logic still works. And basically, if I had, I should probably do a PowerPoint and show it move and show the states, but whatever, don't have time. So I'll just use this simple commented out code block. But you can see that even here in scenario number five, where table number one is exactly equal to table start, is exactly equal to table number two end, the logic above still applies and it's going to get pulled in. It's not until this block moves complete, uh, uh, table one start to end date range, moves completely outside of table two start to end date. There's a gap in there. At that point, both of these are, well, one of them is violated and it no longer applies. So anyway, that's all the scenarios. And you just got to remember if you're going to join start and end date one table versus start and end date of another table and where clause, just use that logic. It works like a charm. Very handy trick. Used it all over the place now, last 10 years. To download the SQL scripts in this video, open a browser. In the URL, go to www.github.com slash data research labs, all one word. It pops up, click the SQL scripts link or filter to find it. And scroll down 
until you see the data validation scripts in the markdown language. Click it and scroll down. Now, I don't have the green plum links built or the SQL server and I don't have the videos built. They will be, it's just gonna take time. But for our purposes here, let's go to Oracle. Let's look at, I'm sure, let's look at the uh, diff checks. Right click, open in a new tab. And in this case, all the details are collapsed. So expand it, big bunch of SQL that's gonna schema diff and tell you source to target, whether the structure's changed. And you can hover over this little clipboard, click that and voila, you've copied it. And if I were to go over and open up a notepad and paste that in, there it is, there's all the SQL properly formatted. So that, is how you open up and use the SQL scripts from this video and all the rest of the videos. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.